This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this flat style sphere with an arrow wrapped around it. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So we'll minimize this and get started here in Inkscape. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we have the view set to custom and then we'll zoom in at one to one. And then we're going to open up the Align and Distribute menu with this button over here. And we'll want Last Selected chosen from that drop-down. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button there. So the first thing we're going to draw is a circle. So let's grab the Circles and Ellipses tool. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly round circle like that. And we'll go to the Select tool. Uh, we're going to convert this to a path by going to Path, Object to Path. And I'll take the opacity of this and bring this down about in half. And I'll turn on the lock icon up here between the width and the height. And I'll change the width of this to 500. So just erase whatever's in there. Hit 500 and then enter. And it should be 500 pixels circle like that. And what we want to do now is right click that and go to duplicate. And we'll turn that copy red. And now we'll turn off that lock icon. And we'll make the width of this 580. We'll hit 580, then hit tab to skip over to the height. And we want the height of it to be 300. So we'll hit 300 and hit enter. And then hold shift and click on that circle, the, the, uh, the black circle. And just make sure we have it centered on the vertical axis and horizontal axis. And then we could hold shift and click on the, the black circle to deselect that. So we just have the red oval selected. And I'm just going to hold control and click and drag this up to about here. That's pretty good. And what I'll do now is I'll right click that and go to duplicate. And I'll turn that green. And I'm going to hold control and click and drag this down to here. Like that. And then I'll hold control and shift and I'll grab this corner arrow and just scale this down a little bit until the width changes to about 545 or 544 or something like that. You can see it changing as you scale. So uh, get that to about 544 or whatever. It doesn't have to be exactly that. And I'm just going to zoom in over this bottom portion over here. I'm just going to hold control and roll up on the mouse wheel to zoom in. And I just want to make sure I hold control and click and drag this green ellipse down past the black circle like that. We want it to be sticking out a little bit like that. And that's pretty good just like that. So what I'll do now is I'll grab the Bezier pen which is right here. Or you could press B on the keyboard. And uh, I want to turn on the snap to paths, uh, the little green squiggly line up here. And I want to snap the cursor onto this right edge of the green ellipse, a little lower than about the midpoint. The midpoint's right about here. We're going to go just a little lower than the midpoint, right about there. And click and hold control on the keyboard to lock it onto the vertical, I mean the horizontal axis, and bring this line straight across until it snaps to the, the left edge. And click. And we can let go of control and snap the cursor onto this left edge of the red ellipse right there and then click and then hold control and move this all the way to the right till it snaps click and let go of control and snap it back to the starting point and just like that and what we could do now is we can go to the uh, select tool we could turn up the snap to paths we don't need that right now and I'm going to hold shift and click on the green ellipse and go to path union. And then I'll take the red ellipse and I'll right click that and go to duplicate and hold shift and click on the green object and go to path difference. And what I'll do now is I'll duplicate this red ellipse again but instead of right clicking it and going to duplicate we can just hit control D on the keyboard to duplicate it. So go ahead and make a duplicate copy, turn that blue. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift and scale this in until it's about that small. And I'm going to hold Control and just move this up a little bit like that. I'm going to hold Control and take this top, this bottom arrow and scale that down a little bit. What I'm looking at here is the edge of the black circle showing through right here. You notice there's, there's some space in there. We want to leave some space in there like that. We don't want to go out here and, and it goes inside of the black circle or too far out. You want to leave just a little bit of space in there like that. That space right there. That's what I'm referencing. So that's pretty good. Maybe I'll move this down just a little bit like that. Just to give it a little bit of like perspective as if we're looking at it 
on the uh, look, we're looking like towards the horizon and that's pretty good like that and what I'll do now is I'll hold shift uh, hold shift and click on the red ellipse and go to path difference and then I'll take this black circle and I'll duplicate that by hitting control D and I want to grab the uh, bezier pen which is right here or again we can just press B on the keyboard and bring the cursor to this little white space right here between those uh, between the red and black shapes but bring it to the outside over here like that and then click and start a point there you zoom out again to zoom out in and out I'm just holding control and rolling up and down on the mouse wheel and I'll just hold control and bring this line straight through that white space all the way through the white space on the other side and then to the outside of the graphic and click then we can let go of control and just finish up the line going around the entire graphic and back to the starting point like that. It doesn't matter how it draws, it's irrelevant. So just as long as you bring it around the outside of the graphic and back to the starting point, that's pretty good. We can go to the select tool now, hold shift and click on the black circle and go to path intersection. And then we could hold shift and click on the red ring there and go to path difference. And uh, let me press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And we now have a starting point for our graphic. So what we want to do now is create the actual head of the arrow, which is right here. We're going to put this, we're going to create the head of the arrow and put it right here. So I'll grab this uh, squares and uh, rectangles and squares tool and hold control and shift and click and drag to create a perfectly symmetrical square like that. And if the corners aren't sharp, just make sure you click that button up there to make the corner sharp. And then we'll go to the uh, select tool. I'll click on this a second time to get the rotation handles and I'll hold control and rotate this around one, two, three, three steps until the corners are sitting perfectly vertical and horizontal like that. And then I'll duplicate that shape by hitting control D and then I'll hold control and rotate it around three more steps. One, two, three. So it's back to its original position. And then I'll click on it again to get the scaling handles and I'll hold control and grab this left arrow scale this up until the height of it exceeds the height of the square beneath it and then just hold control and bring this off to the left over here uh, with the with the corners of the square beneath it remaining within the boundaries of this blue square like that so once we've done that we could hold shift and click on the other square and go to path difference and then we can go ahead and put this square over here we want this to be a little bigger we want this we want the height of this to exceed the green and the red ring right here. So I'm just going to hold sh control, scale that up to about that size. That's pretty good. Maybe like that. Then I'll click on it again to get back to the rotation handles. But I'm going to take this little side slider right here on the right. I'm going to slide that down just a touch like that. And I'll take this top slider up here and I'll slide that to the left just a touch a little bit as well. Just a tiny bit. Just like that. That's pretty good. And I'll put this over here like that. And what I want to do now is right click that and go to duplicate. Then hold shift and click on the green object and go to path, difference, and then path, break apart. And then I'll click on that blue arrowhead again. I'll duplicate that by hitting control D. Hold shift, click on the red object and go to path, difference, path, break apart and click off of that to deselect everything. And what we want to do now is grab the rectangles and squares tool and create another rectangle. We're going to start this out on the left side of the arrowhead and just click and drag to create a square going out to about here like that. That's pretty good. Now we can grab the select tool, hold shift, click on this green object to the right and go to path difference. And what we have to create now is a little bit of the uh, the bevel on the right side here, kind of like what you see here, as a, to make it look like the arrow is like a like a 3D uh, beveled up sort of thing. So to do that, I'm going to turn on the snap to cusp nodes and the snap to paths, and I'll grab the bezier pen, which is right here, or you could just press B on the keyboard, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Again, just holding Control and rolling up on the mouse wheel. I'm going to snap the cursor onto this corner right here and click. And hold control and bring this out, this line diagonally up into the left, 135 degrees. And you'll know, it'll show you what degrees it is down here in this little, at the bottom of the screen. 
We want to make sure that says 130 degrees, uh, 135, I'm sorry, 135 degrees, and bring that out until it snaps to the edge of the red object right there, and then click, and then just hold control and bring it straight down, all the way down to like here, and click. And we can let go of control, snap to the bottom corner of the green object, and then back to the starting point over here, and then click. And what we can do now is we can go back to the select tool, and uh, we could turn off the snap to paths. We don't need that. We could right click that object and go to duplicate. And then want to grab the object over here, right where this right co top corner is, and just click and drag this and snap it onto this corner down here, the lower left green corner of the, of the green object. And then hold shift and click on the other object that we just drew and go to path difference. And then we could duplicate that by hitting control D and hold shift, click on the red object to the right right here and go to path difference and then path break apart and then hold shift and click on this red object to the right to deselect it so we just have this piece selected then we could press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that and then we could take this object right here and we can make that I'm just gonna make this a darker shade of red and bring the opacity of that down as well and then I'll hold shift and click on the X to get rid of the uh, the stroke and what I want to do now is I want to take this red, not this red, the, uh, the black circle. Let me turn off the snap to custom nose. We don't need that. I'm just going to hold control and move this up a little bit. Just a tiny bit like that. You can move it up as far as you'd like. Just make sure you don't lose that white space in there like that. Maybe about up to there. And that's pretty good like that. And what we could do now is, um, what I'll do is I'll take that circle and I'll duplicate it again by hitting control D. And I'll grab the Bezier pen, which is right here, where you just press, press B on the keyboard. And again, I'm going to start this point out right in that white space. Let me zoom out. Hold Control, bring it straight through. Let go of Control, finish it up around the outside. The idea was to get the bottom, this red, this black circle, sitting on the very edge, the corner of this red shape right there. But it didn't quite work out as it did when I was designing it in the thumbnail. So maybe, um, I don't know, maybe it'll work out better for you. Uh, it's, it's, it's different every time when we're just, we're just eyeballing it, not going off numbers. So uh, anyway, now that we've done that, we have the shape, we have the duplicate copy. Hold Shift, click on both of those and go to Path Intersection. And then we wanna duplicate that by hitting Control D. Hold Shift, click on this red object to the left and go to Path Difference. And we'll click on this black shape right here, hold shift, click on the red object to the right, and go to path the difference. And then one final step would be to create the bevel for the uh, arrowhead right here. So to do that, I'm going to click on the blue arrowhead. I'll duplicate that by hitting control D, and I'll make that red, and I'll bring this up into the right, maybe about here. And then I'll hold control and take this top right arrow and scale this down so it's smaller. Put this right about up here, that's pretty good. And again, we'll grab the Bezier pen, which is right here. I just like to press B on the keyboard. We'll turn it on the snap to cusp nodes, and I'll start at this corner, and then go to that corner, and then to this corner, over here, and back to the start. And we could turn that off, and turn off the snap to cusp nodes. We can go to the select tool, take the red shape, press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it, and we could turn that red, we can click this object that we just created, we turn that red, bring the opacity down about in half, hold shift, click on the X to get rid of the outline, and I'm actually going to hold shift and click on the blue arrowhead so we have both of those selected, and I'm just going to hold control and just click and drag and move this down a little bit so it looks a little, uh, it looks like the arrowhead's running in the center of this strip right here, so that's, I think it looks better like that than it did before like that, so that's pretty good. Maybe I'll move it up just a little more. You could play with it, get it to look however you think looks best. And once we've done that, I'll click on the black, I mean not the black, the blue arrowhead, and hold shift, click on the green object, and go to path, union. And then I'm gonna press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. I'm gonna click and drag over the whole thing, bring the opacity all the way up, and I'll click on it again to get the rotation handles. And I'm going to hold control and grab the top right corner arrow and rotate it clockwise nine steps. So we're going to go nine steps clockwise while holding control. So one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like that. And what we want to do now is make it all one color. So I'm going to go with like a light shade of gray, maybe 10% gray. And then we want to give it an outline, otherwise known as a stroke. To do that, hold shift and click on the color. Uh, I'll just go with 90% gray like that. And if you're using, um, if, if the version of Inkscape you're using behaves a lot like the version I'm using, which is version 48, you're going to end up with a bunch of different shaped a different a bunch of different sized strokes so to do that we'll go to the to fix that we'll go to the stroke style tab and where it says percentage we'll just change that to pixels px and then the width we're just going to make that 12 hit 12 oops 12 and hit enter and we want to give this a rounded join and a rounded cap and there's our shape and what we could do is we could start coloring in the individual pieces and click off of it to deselect everything Notice like I did here, you can just color them in however you see fit. You could take this one and make that red. Take this one, make that the same shade. Then you could take these little inner pieces right here, hold shift and click all of them to select them all at once. Make them like a lighter shade of red. And then take this in here and maybe make this like a, uh, a sky, like a lighter blue. Or if you want, and if you want, you could even change the, uh, the color of the outline by clicking and dragging over all of it. And let's say you want to give it like a yellow outline. You could hold shift and click on yellow and it changes the outline color. You could hold shift and make it green or red, or a darker green or even a darker red. Whatever you want to do. That's, um, that's pretty much how you can create this concept using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.